Hi, my name's Lloyd and I'm a shift leader with a few years of experience at Crisis and I'm really excited to talk to you today about what your volunteering is going to involve. So our volunteers at Crisis, over the project as a whole, Crisis at Christmas, we have 11,000 volunteers in London, 13,000 over the UK as a whole. We need a lot of volunteers to run a shift. Generally speaking, there's going to be about 100 volunteers per shift, slightly fewer on the night shift. And we also have volunteers who are offering services and our activities volunteers. There are also supporting roles in our operations centre, our warehouse and in our transport team. So I'm going to go through what you can expect in a day in the life of a volunteer. We'll cover getting ready for your shift, getting to your centre, arrival and sign-in, and most importantly, getting a badge, assembling in the volunteers area, attending the briefing, how you undertake your tasks, and also interacting with the guests, which is one of the fundamental things that will be part of your volunteering experience. And then, of course, very importantly, food and drink. Uh, there will also be a debrief at the end of your day uh, to talk about your experiences as a volunteer that day and when you go home, how you can share your experiences as a crisis volunteer. So what do you need to wear when you're on shift? So it's really important to wear layers, strong, comfortable shoes or boots, Crisis will provide you with a pair of gloves if you need them, but you might want to bring a pair, potentially a hat or a scarf, because we do have outside duties. So it's really important that you've got something that's going to keep you warm and potentially is rainproof if it's raining that day. So leave the high fashion items at home and the expensive labels at home. So really the message is dress warmly and dress appropriately. What other useful things could you bring uh, when you're on shift? So it's probably a good idea to bring some snacks, potentially high energy snacks, nothing that's going to need a fridge or a cooker. You can bring your own food, but we don't have fridges for you to use or microwaves to reheat. We do have vegetarian options at our centres, but if you're vegan or you have other dietary requirements, you may need to bring your own food. What else can you bring? Towels or toiletries for the guests. If you want to bring clothes, please don't bring in clothes on the first day of your shift. If you can check with your shift team what clothes they need, that will really help us in terms of making sure that the clothes that you bring are the clothes that we really need. So the general message is please bring with you as little as possible. Now getting to your centre, it's really important that you think about how you're actually going to get on shift. Now the 23rd of December is normally Sunday service, so that can mean that first trains and last trains or tubes may be different to during the week. On the 24th of December, public transport normally stops at around 10 o'clock. And on Christmas Day, of course, there's no transport at all. Now, we do have a community site, which I'll mention at the end, where you can potentially uh, share car journeys. But it's really important to say Christmas Day, there is no public transport. On the 26th of December, there's probably going to be very limited Sunday service. If you're driving in to your centre, the good news is there's no congestion charge from the 25th of December to the 1st of January. However, we must say that we absolutely cannot guarantee parking. So what do you do when you arrive? So it's really important, if you can, to arrive at least 10 or 15 minutes before the start of your shift time because that gives you a time to put your coat away, get yourself a cup of tea, go to the loo before the shift briefing starts. Um, it's, it's really is so important that you're there for the start of that shift time so that you're there to have your whole health and safety briefing. Now, if you're ill, 
please don't come on shift because there's the possibility that uh, you can make other people ill and we don't want you to get worse. So if you're not well, stay at home. But otherwise, please turn up for all of your shifts or go online and change your shifts if you can't come in for whatever reason. So you can update that online throughout Christmas. So part of the way that you can help us keep in touch is by using an email address that you can access over Christmas. So maybe not a work email, because if we're sending you important update emails over Christmas and it's going to your uh, work email and we get an out of office, then there's the possibility that you might miss important information. The other thing that's important to say is please don't bring any family members or friends with you unless they have already registered as volunteers. But we always need more volunteers, so encourage your friends and family to sign in online. We need to know that we have enough volunteers to run our shift and our centre safely and every day there's always a proportion of our volunteers who just don't turn up. So please don't be that volunteer. Thank you. Okay, so when you get into the centre, what's going to happen next? Well, you're going to get a badge, a white badge, which identifies you as a volunteer. Now this badge is really important because it allows you access into areas where the guests aren't able to go. So it's really important that you wear it visibly at all times, particularly if you're taking on and off layers of clothes, it always needs to be visible. When you go home after your first shift, please bring it back to all of your subsequent shifts. And if you lose it while you're in the centre, please tell a member of the shift team immediately. And you also need to keep it after your last shift because you're going to need it in January. So these white badges are the badges that general volunteers wear and you are really the people that make crisis happen every year. You'll be carrying out a variety of tasks inside and outside the centre to enable the centre to function. You get to engage with guests, ensure that their crisis Christmas is the best it can be and get the opportunity to use all of the services that we're providing for them. You will work under the direction of uh, key volunteers now, and also green badges, and these are obviously different badges. So who are the green badges? Well, the green badges are shift leaders or assistant shift leaders. They're volunteers just like you but they will have had perhaps a few more years experience. They've been general volunteers, they've been key volunteers, but they really have the responsibility for running the shift. Now they are trained to deal with guest issues, volunteer issues, any emergencies, whether that be medical situations or if any violence occurs on shift, which I have to say is very rare. The other badge that you're most likely to come in contact with is this key volunteer badge and you'll recognise it because they have a red dot. Now they support the shift leaders and the assistant shift leaders, they're really the eyes and ears of the green badges and they're the ones that you're probably going to have most contact with. They manage and coordinate all the teams of volunteers within the centre. They're experienced, so they're a kind of safe pair of hands. And again, they've been trained to deal with guest issues, volunteer issues, any emergencies or medical situations. So they're the first people to go to if you have a question, a query, or there's a situation that you think needs dealing with. Now there are some other badges uh, that you may see on shift and these are all in the volunteer handbook um, and the explanations are there. What do you do once you arrive? You've got your bag. The most important thing that you can do is then go into the volunteers area. Now the volunteers area is just for volunteers. Only volunteers have access. You can leave your coat 
your bag, your phone, your snacks, anything else like that. And you will go there at the start and end of your shift and it will normally have tea and coffee and snacks. We try to make it as safe as it possibly can be, but as I said, please try not to bring anything really valuable when you're on shift. Then what you're going to do is you will go to a shift team briefing. That will be a chance where the shift team can introduce themselves and there will be important health and safety information, information about the centre, planned services, entertainment and activities. Thank you so much for listening to this briefing. There will be other videos uh, that are available to access. Thank you so much for volunteering with Crisis. It really is an amazing thing to do. It's one of the best things I've ever done in my life. So please enjoy your volunteering with Crisis. Thank you.